So as we think about how to stop people like Donald Trump, the key question is, how do we close the intensity gap? So if you look at many of the outcomes over the last couple of years, you look at Brexit, the driver of that is, if you can whip people up, if you can get them to be very intense using these new power models, you know, you've got a much better chance of winning. So I want to show you this um, from our own work in, in Syria. So uh, I use this as an example of, I think, a positive counterpoint, right? So if we think of ourselves at the moment as in a kind of big war over values in the world, right? On the one hand, you've got the Trumps and the Brexits who want to essentially return to uh, a kind of nativist, tribalist uh, world. And on the other hand, you've got people who support openness, pluralism, compassion, science, etc. The challenge for those of us on the, the side of the angels, I would argue, is that we have to prosecute those battles as effectively and generate the same kind of intensity for our values as the people who are advocating for those other values. So we have this challenge in Syria. It's really easy when you're talking about Syria, right, to whip the Western public up and say they're all crazy and they're all terrorists and all of the things that people do. Our challenge was to get the Western public to care about Syrians, ordinary Syrians. So at Purpose, we started this effort called the Syria Campaign. We found this group of volunteer search and rescue workers who pulled people out of the rubble in Syria and saved lives. And so um, we realized that if we could tell their story in a way that was incredibly emotionally potent, that built some real intensity around their values, you know, we had a real shot of shifting the narrative on Syria. So I'll play you this video, which is just, I think, an example of um, the kind of communication that I think we need a little bit more of. في أحد الأيام تعرضت منطقة الأنصاري لقصف بالبراميل المتفجرة. حصلنا نطالع العائلة الأولى والعائلة الثانية. العائلة الثالثة هي الأم والولد. هي فعلاً يعني الأم كانت كتير من فعلة. عندها كثيرة كانت عصبية وكانت عم تصيح يعني هي خايفة على حالة أو خايفة على أبنها بعد الحفل الطويل حسنا نسمع صوت الولد صوت صار يبكي الولد حسنا نسمع صوته وكان كثير محل صعب بعد ما وصلنا الولد هون صار الشغل كثير بده حذر يعني هذا ولد عمره أسبوعين أو أكثر بأي لحظة بيطب شيفه أو بيموت أو بختلاء الله اتناع الساعة طبعا هي ما يكلنا تنقاد يعني عمل كتير حزر يعني هي روح بدك تتعامل معها بشكل خطير جدا يعني انه طفل عمره اسبوعين يطب فوق برميل او تلت سقوف ما يستيبه شي يعني وكل هالضغوطات انه هذا الطفل يطلع اول من برميل واول من سقوف اول من كل شي هذا ما عنا وقت قلي له قصف 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 So, I mean, this is an example of how do you build passion and intensity around the values that we so badly need to defend today, that are so under siege. And so we've helped to build this big movement around the White Helmets. People around the world have given them millions of dollars, have helped buy them uh, headgear, ambulances, have helped expand their role as the only people in Syria, really, who are trying to um, build a future for the country. That's the little boy in the video. Um, he's in Turkey, he's safe, uh, his family has been resettled. Uh, tragically, um, the, the man that saves him was killed in one of the barrel bombing attacks doing this heroic work last year. So the stakes are pretty high. 